Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sundays at Noon online concert series, filmed here in the Sculpture Hall at the Hugh Lang Gallery, Parnell Square. We're delighted today to have sisters Mary Louise and Teresa O'Donnell on harps and soprano. We'd like to thank the Arts Council of Ireland for their support, the staff at the Hugh Lang Gallery, and Berquin and Stephen Tiernan of Sonic Studios. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the concert. Welcome to our concert of contemporary music for the Irish harp from Dublin City Gallery, the Hugh Lane. My name is Mary Louise and this is my sister Teresa. And we began with a piece called Introduction and Air by Joan Trimble. The piece was commissioned in 1968 and premiered in 1970 by Grania Yates and Mercedes Garvey. In 1975, it was included in the seminal work, The Irish Harp Book, which was compiled and edited by Sheila Larche Cuthbert. This book is a remarkable work and is the high point of what is often called the golden age in composition for the Irish harp, which happened during the 1960s and 70s. 
And this book contains um, compositions by all the leading contemporary composers, such as Shor Shabadli, James Wilson, Brian Boydell, and of course, Alois Fleischmann. Now, Grania Yates was responsible for commissioning and premiering a lot of these works during the 1960s and 70s, but she was a harpist singer. So she also encouraged composers like Brian Boydell and Alois Fleischmann to compose for voice and Irish harp. It's a medium that unfortunately hasn't been explored as much as it could have been over the last few decades. So about 18 months ago, um, I applied for funding through the Artist Support Scheme of Fingal Arts Office to commission Rona Clark to compose a piece of music for voice and Irish harp. The result is Music, Stars and Atoms. It's three songs based on poetry by Michal O'Shiel. The, the poems were published in collections over many decades, but the theme that runs through the songs is music. The first song is called Hail Madam Jazz, and the vocal line is very much influenced by jazz singing. The vocal line is accompanied by a harp part which can be described as a rock backbeat, which runs almost from start to finish, and includes tapping effects, knocking effects in one hand while the other is playing a melody while the voice is singing something totally different over it. So there's a lot of fun happening in that particular piece. The second song is called Lullaby, and as you would expect with a lullaby, it has that typical rocking effect. But there is a sense that perhaps all is not well in the world of the child listening to this particular song. This uh, poem was taken from um, a collection called Tongues, and peppered the whole way through the songs, there are uh, words from different languages. And uh, my six-year-old has been singing different languages and all these songs for the last few weeks and really enjoying the different languages. The final song is called Bird Song and it consists of a vocal line which soars above the harp part which is relentless from start to finish.
next year, 2022, marks the centenary of the birth of the composer James Wilson. Wilson was born in the UK and served in the Royal Navy during the Second World War and also worked as a civil servant. Towards the end of the 1940s, he moved to Ireland to pursue a full-time career in music. He was also a founder member of Aesthona. Today, we are going to perform his superb duet, Spanish Arch. The work is beautifully written for the harp and explores different timbres, techniques and tunings.
from an exciting work for harp duet to a piece for solo Irish harp. This year, 2021, marks the centenary of the birth of the Irish composer Gerard Victory, and we felt it would be fitting to select a piece by him. I have chosen to play three pieces for Irish harp. Victory was a prolific composer, composing over 200 works, including symphonies and operas. He was a member of Aistona and also director of music at Radio Televish Aaron for many years.
So before our final piece, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Mary Barnicott and her colleagues here at the gallery for facilitating this concert. It's wonderful to be back playing here again. I'd also like to thank the Fingal Arts Office for funding the commissioning of Rona Clark's work for Voice and Irish Harp, and to thank Michal O'Sheal for providing such beautiful texts. In normal circumstances, Rona Clark would be here today to hear the premiere of her work. Unfortunately, in these extraordinary times, she's not able to be here. But wherever you're listening, Rona, I hope that you're happy with my interpretation. I would like to say that it's one of the most fascinating pieces and challenging pieces I've ever played on voice and Irish harp. But I have no doubt that in the years ahead, it will be acknowledged and celebrated as one of the most important, influential and inspired pieces of music ever written for voice and Irish harp. So from one premiere to another, and it's our final piece. It's called 2020 Vision, and it's written by an English composer guitarist who's been living in Ireland for over 10 years. Henderson, like a lot of musicians, wrote this piece during the first lockdown in March and April of last year. And it was a very creative time for many musicians and composers because it allowed them time to um, continue and to start projects that they had maybe put to one side um, due to work commitments. So this is one of the pieces that comes from that particular period. It consists of two movements. The first movement is called Isolate, and it basically involves retuning the harps to different tunings. Now, the composer is a guitarist, so he would be well used to um, changing the string tunings depending on what type of music that he's accompanying. But it's quite unusual on Irish harp to retune, um, retune the strings, largely because we're afraid they're going to break. But in this particular um, tunings, we're allowed to play enharmonic scales on both harps, which create a beautiful effect. Now, the eight of isolate refers to this eight note pattern that recurs throughout the movement. And it kind of creates an almost hypnotic effect. The final movement is called Dance at a Distance, and it's a fun, an opportunity to have a little bit of fun with the harp. I get a chance to use the instrument as a percussive instrument by tapping and beating and even using one of these mallets to play. So while I'm doing all of that, Teresa is playing a melody in a waltz time which gets faster and faster and faster, so fast at the end it's out of control, perhaps a metaphor for the last year. Thank you.